In this recording, I'm planning on showing people how to make a gravity simulation. This is spe specifically for astronomy. Uh, I will be using Processing, which is a open source language. You can download the Processing app for Chromebooks, for Windows, for Macs, or you can use Open Processing, which is an online version. One thing I want to mention real quick is that if you do use Open Processing, so I'm in creating a sketch here. Make sure that you open up the settings with these three little dots here and choose processing.js as your language. So to begin with, for those of you that haven't done much programming, let me take you through some of these introductory functions. So there's going to be two main functions that we're going to need to know about that processing does for you. Setup, which does things at the very beginning, and then drawing, which is continually done after that. And basically what it does is it walks through and does each command in order from the top to the bottom, and then it does draw over and over again from top to bottom. For this simulation, I will be creating a series of little circles on the screen that are going to represent the planets, basically. So to begin with, one of the things that we're going to need to know is what are the pieces that we're going to be using in the simulation. So from physics, we're going to be using x and y components. This is going to be a two-dimensional simulation, so we don't need to worry about z. But when wherever we're considering something that's force, velocity, position, whatever it is, normally in physics you use vectors, which is basically a distance and a direction with an angle. We're going to be breaking that into the x piece and the y piece of that, and using basically x and y components for everything instead. It's two variables either way. Either you have a distance and an angle, or you have an x and a y. So it doesn't make much of a difference to the computer as far as the memory goes. The other thing I'm going to be considering is that the mass is going to be the area of a circle. So you can consider the mass being the radius squared times pi if you want. But we're going to use that calculation to figure out the value of the radius out of the mass. Also, when we're considering collisions, we're going to use an x and y coordinate and then uh, add up the two radiuses. And if the distance between them is less than the two radiuses added together, we know that there actually has been a collision. When we get to collisions, we're going to be considering inelastic collisions. Inelastic collisions, you have one mass and a second mass that are going to hit each other, and they each have individual velocities. So you can consider this m1 times v1 plus m2 times v2. And that's going to be equal to the total mass times the third velocity here. So basically, they stick together and then move together as a single thing. When we're looking at zooming, we're going to need to basically take whatever our thing is that has left the screen, and we're going to recenter it. And then but this amount of x and this amount of y is going to be added to all the objects in order to decide where they're going to go to. So one of the things we're going to need is to keep track of all of the objects in our screen. And they're going to have a variety of things that they're going to need to keep track of. So they're going to need their x and y position on the screen, x and y velocities, x and y accelerations, their mass. So I'm going to start with setting aside some memory for all of those things. I'm going to have something that keeps track of how many total objects there are, So maybe 20 to begin with. You always say what kind of thing it is. So this is an integer. The total number of objects is 20. And then you do a semicolon at the end. So what this says is take the 20, make it put it into this space that I've set aside the total objects. And that's going to be an integer, as opposed to a floating point number or like letters on the screen or something. I'm going to set up the width of my screen to be 600 pixels, pixels being the little dots on the screen, the little points of light. So it's going to be 600 across and 600 down. Keep in mind 0, 0 is the top left. so the y-axis is actually flipped in all of our calculations. So for those of you in physics, that's fine because you could find your own axes, but it's something to get used to if you're used to just y being up. I'm going to have a floating point number, which is going to be what the initial velocity of all my objects is going to be. I'm going to set it to 1.5 for now. And now I need to set aside space for all of my objects. So I'm going to need to set aside space for 20 of these things. And so what I'm going to use is something called an array. It's kind of like a table of values. So the way you do it is you use square brackets. So it's going to be a table of floating point numbers. I'm going to do x coord 
which is short for x coordinates. And then in here, I'm going to create a new one of these things, a new table of values, a new array, which is going to have 20 things in it. So since I've assigned 20 into total objects, whenever I use the name total objects now, it's going to be 20. Similar thing for the y coordinates. Let's see, I need to have a float for x velocities. I need to have y velocities. I need to have x accelerations and y accelerations. I need to have the mass. All right. Well, let's start with that. So then, when I actually set up my window, which is what this does, I'm going to be, rather than creating a canvas, what I'm going to do is set the size of the window I'm going to have. So I'm going to have mine be 600 by 600. I mentioned that earlier. And then I'm going to have to create all my objects. So you see this thing here where I do two slashes? That is a comment. It means that everything after that is just notes that I'm providing myself. If you ever want to comment on multiple lines, you can do slash star and then star slash on a different line. And that will comment out everything in between. As far as size, you may be wondering, well, where is that set up? If you look up in processing at the reference for it, this is the list of all the things that you're allowed to do. So it has setup, if you're wondering where setup was, and draw. Those are the two things there. So if I want to see what happens in a draw command, it has an example and tells me what's going on. So these are all the things that I can do in processing. It's a lot of useful things. Um, for example, there's a whole bunch of things having to do with trigonometry and calculations in math, random numbers. Um, and then in the environment, here is size. So this is where you give it a width and a height, and it'll tell you that's the order you put things in. And basically, with any kinds of method like this, It'll tell you what these things need to be that you fill in and the order that you put them in. Now down here, notice that they're actually using variables in place of numbers, and you can always do that. You can always replace the numbers specifically with variables. It turns out that uh, in processing, it doesn't like having variables in size because you're setting the initial window. It'll actually complain about that. But after this, I will be using width and height in place of these two. All right, so what do I need to do? To begin with, why don't I go ahead and create all my objects. So rather than doing 20 commands filling up all of these variables, that seems terrible. What I'm going to do instead is make something that kind of walks through each of the things in my x coordinates, uh, x and y velocities, and mass, and fills those values in. So I'm going to use something called a for loop to do that. So this looks like a complicated piece of code, but let me explain it once we're done. I'm going to create a new variable named a. It starts at 0. It's going to keep going through my loop until I reach the total number of objects. So it's going to go through 20 times. So it, while a is less than this number, it just keeps going over and over again. And then when I'm all done with the loop, at the very bottom, I'm going to add 1 to a. This is a shortcut for add 1 to a. So inside of here, a will be 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, all the way up through 19. And then when it reaches 20, it's no longer less than the total objects, and so it's going to go down to whatever's beyond this. And these braces 
specify how many things to do in the for loop. So while you're in the for loop, it just continually does everything between these two braces. Notice that this is all set up. It goes from this brace to this one here, and everything contained inside of that is part of setup. Everything down here is part of the draw event. So these are called blocks of code. So I want to fill up everything in my x coordinates. And I think what I'm just going to do is just give it a random place. So if you look up random, what it does is if you give this, this number here, it picks a number between 0 and whatever this is and just gives it that value. So it goes from 0 to 600, and it'll randomly give that an x coordinate. And now let's do a y coordinate. By the way, notice that I'm tabbing over inside of the for loop just so I can more easily see what's going on. It's not required for code, and there you could put it all in one horrific giant line, but it makes it easier to be able to tell, all right, I'm in a for loop because everything inside of here is tabbed over. So for ease of coding, it's useful. So the velocity, what I want is something between negative, whatever this value is, and positive of that value. So I will basically put in exactly that. So what this does is it picks a random number between the, this value and this one when you give it two arguments. Notice that it's the same name, but it actually does two different things. So y is going to need to do that too. And then let's give the mass. Maybe something between 1 and 20? That's a number that we, that's something we can change later on. By the way, the space in here doesn't matter. All right, so that looks like that's kind of setting up all of the things that I want. 